Hi, I'm Michael Kerr at Yale University School of Medicine. In the Kerr Lab, we're interested in how activity shapes neural circuit development. In particular, we're studying an early period of development after genes have played a fundamental role in shaping brain development and sensory experience has not yet started. So, what do we do in this study? In this study, we eliminated thalamocortical neurotransmission by deleting glutamate neurotransmission from thalamocortical axons. The model system we used was the barrel cortex, which is a somatosensory system representation of the facial whiskers through the brainstem to the thalamus. Using Crelox P technology, we conditionally deleted glutamate neurotransmission from thalamocortical axons so that they were silent. What happened when we eliminated ascending input from the thalamus to the cortex? Well, normally, thalamocortical axons form clusters of thalamocortical axons in the bar into barrels with cortical cytoarchitecture architecture forming rings around the thalamocortical axons. When we eliminated thalamocortical neurotransmission, cortical barrels failed to, failed to form. This eliminated a decades-long controversy about the role of activity in shaping barrel cortex development. We know now that both cortical cytoarchitecture architecture and thalamocortical axon clustering are fundamentally dependent upon thalamocortical axon neurotransmission. However, there were some additional surprises in this study. It's well known that the cortex contains six layers, which form in an inside-out fashion, with thalamocortical axons clustering in layer four. Remarkably, when we eliminated thalamocortical neurotransmission, cortical laminar starter architecture was fundamentally disrupted. In particular, layer four was truncated, and layer two, three was also shrunk, and layer five compensated by expanding, expanding into the shrunken areas of layer four. So cortical lamination, in addition to cortical columnar, columnar formation, is sensitive to ongoing thalamocortical activity. Neuronal morphology was also affected by the absence of thalamocortical neurotransmission. Normally, layer four spiny stellate cells have an ap apical process which projects to the cortical surface. During development, this apical process is retracted and typical compact spiny stellate cells form. In the absence of thalamocortical neurotransmission, these layer four spiny stellate cells retain their apical dendrite and look to pyramidal. Finally, Gene morphological changes were also observed in the absence of the thalamocortical neurotransmission. For instance, the layer 4 marker, DCDC2A, and CUX1, a layer 4 and layer 2-3 marker, had profound shifts in their expression in the absence of the thalamocortical neurotransmission. So that layer 4 failed to express DCDC2A, and instead layer 5 cells expressed DCDC2A, and CUX1 had reduced expression in the cortex. So how do these findings generalize? These experiments show that activity, in particular activity relayed from the sensory periphery, is important for neural circuit development and, and cortical laminar formation and morphological development of neurons in the cortex. Finally, gene expression is also sensitive to the ongoing activity from, relayed from the sensory periphery. So what does this have to do with neural developmental disorders? We believe that typical neurodevelopmental disorders, such as schizophrenia and autism, are thought to be associated with changes in gene expression and synaptic formation. Here we show that altering ongoing activity in the, in the cortex can change gene expression and neural circuit development, suggesting that developmental disorders like autism may be sequela to changes in ongoing activity in the cortex and not direct downstream effects of of gene deletions or gene overexpression in the developing cortex.